Welcome back. I want to take another look at the CD DVD duplicator because I don't really think the problem is the DVDs. You see, the guy who owned this actually gave me some copies that he made of a specific DVD and I kind of forgot about them and I just happened to come across them the other day and noticed that they were the same brand that wasn't working in here. So that clearly indicates that he's used those discs before to make a copy and that just makes me think that maybe there was something else wrong here. So what I want to do is, is I'm actually going to pull out one of the drives that's in here and just do a quick search online to see if maybe there's a newer firmware update for it uh, and try to do something with that. Um, now the other thing that may be is it was spitting out both discs but maybe only one of them had a problem. Just by default it spit both out. Um, but it might have just read one incorrectly. If you go back to the other video, I mentioned that when I tried making copies on my computer, one disc worked and the other didn't. And the disc that did work was made from a file and the one that didn't work was made from an on-the-fly copy. And I don't know if that disc just had an issue with it that the computer was able to copy it, but when I read it back in the reader, it wouldn't read. Uh, in fact, I tried it in several different readers and it wouldn't read. And that was the ill-fated disk and everything else now is gonna work because that one isn't present any longer. So I really don't know, but I do wanna give it a further look. I feel like just saying it's the disk was just kind of dismissing it too quickly. And I owe it more to the customer than to you guys, but I still also owe it to you to provide a full diagnosis of this device. So without any further delay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the case off and we're gonna pull out one of the drives inside and take a look at it. I may actually just pull out all three just so we can give them a good comparison to make sure they actually are three identical drives. Now some points I actually shot footage for but didn't include in the other video were just shots of the board up close just to show you uh, some of the ins and outs of this thing. It's actually really cool inside. It's a bit modular. If you look, you can actually put more SATA connections here and more controller circuitry and scale this upward. There actually is already another port at the top here. And there's uh, another connection down here. Now I haven't really looked at it too much, but I believe this is where you can actually hook a hard drive to. And this thing can actually rip to a hard drive and then you could use that feature to make compilation CDs and stuff, but this may not actually have the firmware to do that. And that's another point of these. Um, that's all what, uh, all, that's all it boils down to for features is what firmware they include in these things. And it, it's a really neat uh, system in here. It's like I said, it's modular. The whole top piece up here is just your standard drive bay size. So you can just always unscrew this and take it out and you can see it's just everything's kind of even and stacked nice inside there. The power supply does have enough um, connections in here for other drives. You can see they're all coiled up at the bottom here. There's actually two more connections, which is nice. Um, yeah, the only thing I don't really like is that they use the hot glue inside the drives in there. You can see a big glob of it right over here. And uh, that's uh, just holding in the power connector. I'm really, not really a fan of that. They did actually put a lot of screws in over here. Um, every time I build a computer, I would only, only use one set of screws per side. I wouldn't actually use both, but they went ahead and did that for all the drives in here. So I'll pan down and show you there are you know, quite a bit of screws there. And this is, like I said, doubled. Um, the, the device on top only has one set of screws, but you're not gonna really mess around with that too much. Uh, let's see if I can show you the power supply over here is uh, it looks like an ATX supply, it's not. It doesn't have all the connectors that an ATX supply would have, but it is very similar. And like I mentioned, or may have mentioned, again, not sh don't remember what footage was included in the other video, but this is very similar to a computer. This is just your motherboard. So I'm sure if you can come across one of these and maybe the board is dead, but the drive still work and the power supply is still good, you could probably hack this. Maybe put a little Linux board in here or um, 
the Latte Panda, which is a uh, little board I'm interested in getting. You could do stuff like that, I'm quite sure, if you wanted to tinker with this thing. Or you could possibly uh, put another drive down in the bottom here. There is room for it. You do just need a different faceplate. And um, there actually is four lights up here, but I've only actually ever seen the green light light up. I haven't seen the other drive uh, lights light. There is connectors for them here, but they're not actually connected to anything, it looks like, which I thought was pretty neat. You can kind of see the red and the red and white wires back here. The, the ends of them are just sitting there. They're actually, um, the end of it is marked with HDD LED. I can't really get a closer shot of that, but I can trust me by saying that. There's four of those HD, um, HDD LED pigtails in here. And uh, then there's also this green one, which connects to the power supply. That one I could pull out here and show you. And that just goes up to the green power button in front. So it's kind of interesting that they have all those uh, LEDs up front, but there isn't actually anything to connect them to. There isn't really actually four hard drives in here. Um, and nor, nor is there a spot on the back of the actual CD-ROM drive to hook it to, to be able to indicate when they're spinning, even though they have their own light. There is um, a couple um, pin headers at the top, but definitely nothing that looks like four of those would connect into. So that's kind of interesting that they've included that, but it's not really in there for any other reason. So with that, since uh, that was just a little poke around, I'm gonna go ahead and take all these screws out on both sides. I don't have a powered way of doing that, so I'm gonna do that by hand. That'll be fun uh, on both sides. And I'll be right back. And I kind of have a little method to doing this. Um, I use both hands. One hand in the back of the screwdriver over here to turn it. And then the other hand to, to kind of reposition the handle. So I can kind of spin it and just um, kind of work it out this way. It's just a really quick way of taking out screws. It's something I've been doing for a while. Plus you can use your other hand uh, close to the bit up here to kind of hold the screws. Keep them from going all over the place. Uh, I, I tighten screws down this way too, but I find um, when I tighten, depending on the torque, I might need to just reposition my hand a little bit just to uh, be able to bear down on it more. But with these drives, you don't really need to go that hard. But yeah, this method, you know, it's done very well for me. Also, just a real close up, unlike regular screws that I've seen in computers, they've actually used these little lock washers in there. They don't really do much, um, if anything at all. But they did include them. I'll we'll have to give them the uh, effort for that. Well, I managed to get all three drives out. And of course, as expected, they all are exactly identical. Only difference is just the serial number on them. And they're not consecutive, obviously, but they're kind of close. But I'll get you a closer shot up here and I'll show you what we're looking for. Now, a quick search online pulled up some results here, but I'll show you what we did first. So this is the actual manufacturer's tag that's on here. You can see the name, it's the Super Multi DVD Rewriter, and it's model number GH24NS72. It gives me the serial number, it was manufactured October 2012, and it tells me the ROM version is WM01. So like I said, I went ahead and I put this model number directly into Google, and what ended up coming up was LG's website under support. And we can see that it says new firmware WM01-01 for that drive. And it gives the Windows 8 support. Well, that's not something we really worry about. But it was released on 11-21-2012. So that leads me to believe that that is definitely newer firmware. The dash -01 designation, I would imagine, would be printed on the actual uh, code here. So what I'm gonna do is download that file um, and attempt to install that onto these drives. Now the best way I could think of doing that is would be to power up one of my older computers here and uh, hooking it up through the SATA connection as opposed to using the SATA to USB connection. I just feel like there could be something that can go wrong with that and I don't really wanna render three DVD drives obsolete. So let me go ahead and uh, do exactly that and we see what we come up with. I went and pulled out an old Windows XP machine. This one luckily had a 
spare SATA connection on here. And I just used a long wire because I had to put the drive at the bottom over here because that's where the next available SATA power connection was. There isn't any extra wires up here I could pull out. Uh, I'll go ahead and fire this thing up and get into the uh, desktop when after that point I'll take a USB flash drive I'll take that file and transfer it to this computer and we'll try to see if that takes if it does take we'll do the other two remaining drives and then we'll uh, reassemble this whole thing and see what we got I'm actually going to go ahead and readjust the camera here a little bit so I can show you this monitor in the background and we'll actually watch the process together we are up into the desktop. I have the file transferred over for the firmware update. If we double click on that, we see we get a little box. And this does confirm that the current version WM01-00, and we are updating it to WM01-01. Uh, I did read the readme file on here, and they recommended doing this firmware update if the drives don't read CDs or DVDs as being blank. So that's definitely a um, key indicator that this is uh, hopefully a good way to go. So we should be able to just hit update here and it should go ahead and do exactly that. Now hopefully this uh, works uninterrupted without any issue and updates this firmware. Because if it doesn't, we'll end up with a brick. What you can see now is this went ahead and did actually update with no problems. Now it's gonna ask me to please reboot the PC. Um, I think that is a good idea to do. When it comes back up, uh, what I'll do is um, just verify it's working and then I'll shut the computer back down, disconnect the drives, and I'll do the other two remaining drives and we'll see what happens when we come back. As soon as I'm getting the drives done, I'm writing a note on it to actually indicate the firmware update. So if someone actually later on pulls this out and looks at it, they can just see right away from taking a peek at it. I did notice there was a utility uh, in the menu of the actual duplicator um, firmware that allowed you to look at this information, but it just stopped at the first zero 01. It didn't give you the dash zero zero. So we'll see if that also changes now that this is finished. Well, now that we have the drives updated and installed back into the machine and everything put back together. We're gonna to go ahead and power it up and see that it does actually read the drives. And we're gonna also play around with some of the menu options and see what we can read. Now you can see it comes up with V2.28.6. This is the BIOS revision number for the actual controller itself. Um, and it's checking, it's gonna actually count down and it says it found three drives, which is great. There's no errors as of right now, but we will actually go through, um, this is the main menu, and we're gonna go down to the utility option, hit enter, and then it's gonna come up with information, which we'll hit enter. Um, we have disk info, drive info, which we'll hit enter. And it's gonna tell me the manufacturer of the drive, the actual model number, and what port number, so the first drive, port number one, it's WM01, and that's the firmware. Unfortunately, it doesn't show me the dash zero zero or dash zero one they are now. Um, so I guess if there's a major revision, we'll see that change there, but it's still showing me zero one because after all, that, that is what it is. It would have been nice if it scrolled over and showed you the sub revision, but uh, I guess it's really not super important. But we can actually see all three drives here, which is nice. If we hit escape, it takes me back one menu, and I can actually go down one more to system info. And this is where you're gonna see the model number for the actual controller, it's BD1805. Now, if you do Google that, it comes up with another manufacturer, it's not Zipspin, um, and it looks a little different, and it also has a uh, BIOS code that's higher than this, 2.28.6 but I'm a little hesitant in installing that on here because I'm not a hundred percent sure if it's actually going to work with this particular controller what I think happened was is they made it for Zipspin Zipspin had these uh, you know they picked these up in bulk because they probably use this particular drive in every one of their duplicators and they had someone make a case they're probably you know a master company that makes these cases the faceplate may be custom, you know, something that they had made specifically, 
but possibly not. I mean, that could be universal. Even the power supply inside is universal. So for all in, uh, intent and purpose, they just assembled everything, basically. Uh, their website doesn't have any kind of tech support whatsoever on it other than a email link. So I can't just go on there and download a firmware update. Uh, it does seem through looking for manual of another model but similar composition that you can just go through the menu here and select uh, BIOS update. And the process is, is you would actually burn the BIOS file to a disk, insert the disk into one of the drives, I believe the top one, and then um, you know select that from the actual menu and uh, initiate it and it would go through and update itself. Um, but I'm not going to do that because, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't know confidently enough that that's actually going to work. So where does that leave this project right now? Well, it leaves us with three drives that has uh, have had have firmware updates, um, and it leaves us with hopefully a situation where we won't encounter the problem with having uh, blanks not reading. Now I can go ahead and make new copies of the source disk with the DVDs that I have already. But that honestly doesn't really prove much to me because I've already got those discs to work. What's going to prove it to me is getting this back into the owner's hands, getting his blanks, putting them in here, and making them work. Now, this could be a giant you know, thing blown out of proportion, if you will, because it may have just been one bad source disk, or one bad um, blank disk, if you will. Because if you remember in the original video, one worked and one didn't. That could have been the error. Um, he said he tried other discs. I wasn't there when he tried it, so I don't know. I don't know for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do in the interest of getting this video finished off is call this a finished project as of now. When I get it into his hands, um, we'll do some further testing right then and there. And when I get back to, um, you know, when that happens, I should say, and I get back to the uh, uh, area where I can edit this video, um, I'll put an annotation up on the screen someplace to say what the final outcome was. So as of uh, right now, it's, it's, it's a working device. When we get it into his hands, we'll see what this full story was. I really think this is going to solve the problem. Obviously, updating this BIOS would probably be the best option because um, this seems like the symptom for d disks not working is either the firmware here or the firmware here. That's really all I can think of and from what I've been reading online it seems to concur with that. Well anyway with that I want to thank you for watching. I know this uh, was a little scattered all over the place but sometimes the diagnosis of uh, electronics and uh, you know pretty much anything that moves or does something can be a little bit arduous. And uh, well with that I want to say thanks again and see you next video.